today I want to talk to you about a very important topic, and that is sex with PTSD. Um, I was at first surprised when I learned just how common erectile dysfunction is among soldiers returning from combat. I'm going to estimate that of the thousands of soldiers I've seen since 2005, somewhere between 40 and 60 percent cannot have normal sexual relations with their wives. The purpose of this presentation is to help understand this situation and what you may do to make it better. Let me begin with a story. Last week, in one of our group sessions, 10 soldiers, all having been in combat, all with severe PTSD, some in tears over their situations, but all there to support each other. These are the comments that I heard. Sex is a chore. I'm only doing this for her. I'm getting nothing out of it. Foreplay is a waste of time. I want nothing to do with it. I can't get it up. I can't keep it up. I just don't know. I'm not the man I used to be. Now these, these soldiers are very concerned, and they rightfully should be. And even though they're young and healthy and normally would be having a good experience of this type, they are haunted by post-traumatic stress disorder to the extent that it touches every part of their life, including their interest as well as their ability in sex. Let's talk about what are some of the possible causes of an unsuccessful sexual encounter with someone you really care about. Some of this is going to sound very simple to you, but I want you to listen carefully. You can't have good sex with PTSD and alcohol. Alcohol makes sexual activity impossible if you are further stressed with PTSD. You can't have good sex if you are sleep deprived. Losing normal sleep is equivalent to drinking a six pack of beer as far as being able to control your body. You can't have good sex or even normal sex if you're on medications that interfere with sex and you need to ask your providers whether there are any sexual side effects associated with your medications. You can't have good sex if you're depressed. You can't have good sex if you don't have meaningful communication with your sexual partner. You can't have sexual relations unless you are physically and emotionally close to your partner. A lot of soldiers tell me that they feel extremely uncomfortable when they get close to another individual. I mean physically close. In the physical presence of someone close to them, they feel quite vulnerable. Can you imagine then about the psychological closeness and their exaggerated sense of vulnerability? This psychological space <clears throat> is a safety zone, a place where soldiers feel they can close down and stay almost like in a psychological cocoon. I understand that before the soldier leaves home for deployment, they often close down psychologically. And they stay closed down psychologically during combat. And when they come home, it's very difficult to open back up that psychological space and let people in. So sex becomes a chore. And also many soldiers don't feel good about their bodies. So their body image uh, is a negative one. Now we have medications to help with erectile dysfunction. And I can make it available, I don't prescribe it, but I can make it available to any soldier with any kind of psychological issues related to sex. But you know by now, those of you who tried it, that this is not going to be the complete answer. 
the complete answer is going to involve understanding what the possible causes are and removing the ones you can control, such as alcohol, even smoking, decreases sexual ability and appetite, medications, pain, sleep deprivation, work on all those things and don't expect to have a good sex life until these things are significantly under control. Now, we also need to look at the meaning of the sexual relationship to you and to your partner. Sometimes the partner makes it even worse. They think that if you've been away for a year or six months and you come home and you don't have sexual interest in them, many women will believe that you have been unfaithful and you have someone else who is receiving your sexual attention. This causes soldiers to become infuriated when this is not the case. And so the wife feels like there's something wrong with her, that you don't find her attractive anymore, and you feel like there's something wrong with you, and the communication comes to a dead end. So to improve this situation, I strongly urge all soldiers who are having sexual difficulties uh, in their relationships to come in and talk to their provider first alone and then with their sexual partner to explore the possibilities of problems that they may not even be aware of that's interfering with their relationship. Sexual relations is a form of communication. And if you are shut down psychologically and verbally, there is no communication. So you have learned that you want to be left alone. You've learned that you feel safer in a space where no one else occupies it but yourself. The inability to have sex is another form, an extreme form of avoidant behavior and numbness of your feelings. It's not going to work until you can have the courage and the strength to move away from avoidance and give yourself a chance to interact again with the people that really care about you and that you care about. Let me review, let me review what I've said. Most of the soldiers coming back from combat are not able to have normal sexual relationships. Part of it is due to external things like alcohol, smoking, sleep deprivation, but a big part of it has to do with psychological issues, uh, such as not feeling good about yourself, not feeling good about others, and fearing that you will fail making sex a performance activity, but it should not be that at all. And fundamentally, soldiers, many soldiers from combat have shut down their ability to communicate. If you have questions about how you can improve your sexual life, don't think it's gonna be solved just by taking a medication like Viagra or Cialis. It's gonna take more than that, but we can also have you use that for the time being. If you have questions about this, talk to your provider, talk to me, come in first alone and then with your, with your spouse and we can work these things out. Let me have your questions about this so we can address it in the most honest and successful way. Some of the questions that have arisen about uh, sex is um, the question of letting yourself learn how to have fun again. Um, because you've had uh, to live in a very protective uh, environment where you have each other's back, um, uh, having unprotected sex is like a new, new meaning of that term. And that means that it's not your penis that's protected, but your whole body is not protected when you have sex coming back from combat. So <clears throat> it's a matter of learning to trust your partner and learning to feel that you are in a safe environment. I know that, I think I did a survey once that one third of my soldiers sleep with a weapon under their pillow and two thirds with a weapon within reach of their bed. Now, how is it possible to have sex in a bed that's occupied by weapons? It's, it certainly suggests that you're not relaxed enough even to let the normal body's response to sex occur. 
So we want to let you teach yourself how to have fun. And sex should not be a chore. It should be a kind of entertainment and fun and pleasure producing activity for you and for your partner. Um, think about that. Uh, think about having sex in a place that's absolutely safe for you to have fun. You and your partner should find such a place and identify it and reserve it for sex and for fun. As a matter of fact, perhaps it's one of the things that we have not spent enough time on uh, in helping you as doctors, and that is to teach you how to have fun again, fun in general, uh, how to play and how to trust. Uh, sometimes we ask about what your hobbies are, and often the hobbies are very closely related to your combat. Most of the soldiers that I've talked to about hobbies, they want to shoot and hunt and fish and do things like that, which is fine, but it's not really getting you very far away from what you've had to do as a soldier. Choose a, choose a hobby that uh, takes you entirely away from anything you would do as a soldier, whatever it is whether it's reading or watching videotapes or things that are fun for you and your partner. Learning to trust perhaps is the hardest part of all of this because your trust has been shattered by warfare. You've got to learn to trust your partner as well as trust yourself. And don't expect to have good sex until you can learn to have good trust and respect for each other.